Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah we are still going on through our growth model lah in terms of coaching. G R O W T H growth model we have G is for goal setting, R is for reality check, O is for options and obstacles, W is for will power of free will and way forward T is for tactics and tools so now we are still on tactics and tools and then inshallah we are going to habits uh, how to form positive habits for our coach and our client and also for ourselves eh? so what is important is when we talk about this situation where we harness our capacity in terms of both the subconscious and the conscious mind at the highest level which is our spirituality our roh, kalp and akal and then at our physical level we have this local kind of control, whether external or internal, which I explained to you. And then how every situation in our life, every minute, every moment, we face a situation. Every minute, every moment, we face inner speech. We have automatic thoughts, and most of it are negative. As I explained to you earlier on, we have 50 to 70,000 negative or automatic thoughts a day. And most of it are repetitive, and most, most of them are linked back to the situational condition or circumstances that we are facing. So these thoughts, automatic thoughts is linked back to the situation so there will be at least a flow of situation cause thoughts thoughts uh, automatic thoughts cause back to situation and then it go into a spiral that is the vicious cycle of negativity frustration anguish and difficulties that we face and how if we can control or use the positive aspect of positive Islamic psychology we can have a positive inner speech that is integrated with ourselves in terms of the totality of our life which inshallah we'll go into much detail how these thoughts affect our emotions or right? anger or frustration anguish and how it affects our feelings in terms of all our sensory perception in terms of our heartbeat in terms of our facial expression in terms of the uh, feelings in the finger tingling in the finger and so on and then how then this re give us a reaction whether a fight or flight or whether this action is basically based on the positive or negative flow of our thoughts, emotion and feelings eh? and then this action will then give you a result and this cycle is called S-T-E-F-A-R S-T-E-F-A-R Stefar eh? so I've given you some idea of what this Stefar is and how we're going to use this in terms of helping our coach here eh? so we have the situation the situation trigger the feelings and thoughts thoughts then the thoughts trigger the emotions emotion trigger the feelings feelings trigger the action and action trigger the result whether positive or negative i have given you some idea i'm going to give you another idea today of how for example you're going to help out people with a lot of the problems as a coach you can go to our book here post islamic psychology a transcendent model to achieve peace happiness and success we have this support group and what are this support group when you can use this stefar technique uh, we have example in coaching we can do individual or group sometimes we can have three or four people having the same problem or maybe up to small groups or maybe up to five people but if it is a bigger group like i call it anonymous or befrienders it is more of sharing uh, the sharing of their uh, challenges in life in which they're going to face so there are many many challenges huh? so for example as a life coach what are the areas in which you can use this for example people huh? that means youth with drugs alcohol addiction and related problems so we have millions of them all right within the world and within the muslim community also youth addi addiction to online video game online pornography and related problems so you have this whole range of people now especially muslim youth uh, in countries, developing countries like Bangladesh, Malaysia, Indonesia, there's a huge problem. It is growing and it's going out of control because those materials are uploaded by those people who want to make money out of online gambling, uh, online game, uh, phonography, uh, you know, uh, chatting, dating, free sex and so on. So all these things are dating sites that comes to in many shades. Uh, including homosexuality, lesbian, lesbianism and so on which are being promoted openly and if our children are not taken care in terms of we giving them the right value system uh, this 21st century will be a very disastrous century for humanity and for the ummah alright 
Then we have parents who are facing a lot of problems. See, for example, parents of children with autism, they have a lot of problems, ADHD, learning difficulties, and then how using our approach in terms of STEFAR, we can help them out, okay? So I'm just going to give you some lists, huh? and then I will pick one. All right? And then we have family members of mentally ill patients and how they are coping with the stresses of helping their family members who are mentally unsound because of drug addiction. There's a lot in Malaysia, for example, young men in their 20s who have taken overdose of, for example, combining uh, drugs with some herbs and so on. They blow their mind. So now they are literally uncontrollable. All right? They are literally going running amok with knife, with, with parang and so on. So it's very difficult. Whenever they cannot get their drug, they will just go and then threaten to kill their family member. And many, many cases, because the, the family members say no, they chop up their own mother. All right? So this is happening not only in Malaysia, but everywhere in the world where we have people who are becoming insane because of their long-term addiction to drug, which have caused a change in their uh, neurological structure, which caused them to become uh, enraged and become uncontrollable and in the end because of the destruction of all the neurons in their in their brain they could not uh, control themselves and this impulsive action to just do something because the frontal cortex is destroyed will then be a severe problem how would a parent aging parent look after this child who is now a drug addict and who is already mentally unsound okay there are many many challenges eh? we have children of divorced parents and how these children are facing the trauma of divorce all right and so on so i have listed here many others which uh, i have given to you in our book positive Islamic psychology uh, you can go and run through these problem these challenges but let's us take one or two of those that we have explained right? for example if we are going to take a situation all right uh, a, a simple situation you are a coachy and uh, your coachy just represent this with a little hanky handkerchief all right, and I'm going to use this Tefar situation, thoughts, emotion, feelings, to elucidate and draw down a better understanding. For example, we have a girl, take a girl, say her, her name is Amy. All right, Amy is a 16 years old girl, all right, and she has bulimia. All right, she is overweight, and each time she has uh, to take food, she'll take a lot of food, but then when she have taken a lot, she then feel guilty and then she will rush to the toilet and put her hand into the throat and then force to vomit out her uh, her food and this is getting uh, very very often and it is already psychologically uh, a big problem and the uh, uh, most ustas who cannot uh, understand this situation this bulimia uh, hand over to you all right you as a coach how are you going to handle amy's problem so we go through first the situation all right, so you can say to Amy, Hi, Amy, how are you this morning? And Amy says, Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. All right, so uh, you know, so you go through the whole situation. If uh, first icebreaker, uh, that means before you even go into the situation, you go into icebreaker. Uh, how's your brother? How's your father? And she says, Alhamdulillah, my father is doing well. And he kirim salam, he gives salam to you, uh, and so on. So you, you, you break the ice first, uh, even before into the situation condition. Then, uh, after breaking the ice, she is more confident with you. Then you can say to Amy, Amy, uh, you know why, 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 why you are here? Yes, I know because uh, the Ustaz tell me to meet you up. So uh, then you say, I'm, I'm Ahmad, I'm a life coach. Okay, uh, I'm just going to help you, mentor you uh, how to overcome your problem of bulimia. Uh, you know, so the situation is basically how how do you get into this situation so then he, he can say uh, when i was young i used to like to take a lot of food you know say so amy would say you know and then my parents always call me cute because i was plum and round and uh, it was so nice you know everybody calling me cute so i was uh, the cutest fattest girl in the neighborhood all right and my parents was happy they, they don't mind because they think that you know it was not a problem and as I grow a bit older, by the time I was seven years old, I was always feeling hungry at night. So when I'm feeling hungry at night, my mother would prepare sandwich and keep in the fridge for me. So normally I'll wake up uh, at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I'll have a sandwich. So that become my routine every day. 
not only I have good meals but also I have food in the middle of the night if it happened to be because uh, my mother say you know uh, out of his love uh, her love for me uh, she tried to not do it but then because I always make a lot of row over not having those sandwich in the night uh, I always she will have to give it to me like it or not so from seven years old onwards I having a lot of food especially in the night and uh, when I cannot sleep I just go to the fridge and take out the sandwich which is prepared by my mother so this thing goes on uh, and I'm quite okay but in school now people call me Rolly Polly so I'm getting a lot of teasing people call me fatty Rolly Polly and so on and quite a number of my friends don't want to become my friends because I could not play sports so I'm, I just uh, isolate myself and uh, from nine years old onwards uh, I feel very bad because uh, I can see my friend who was slim pretty and nice and I also want to be slim pretty and nice but uh, you know uh, I cannot do it so it was uh, I was depressed I was always having a lot of problem challenging myself not to eat and then to eat and then not to eat and then to eat until now I reach a situation where if I eat I feel guilty I'll just vomit it up all right so so that is the situation now all right then you can ask Amy what are your thoughts so Amy will say okay each time I eat I feel like that I'm getting fat all right and each time I feel like getting fat I feel that I have to throw the food away but I cannot control myself the thought keep on saying eat 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 so I have my inner speech say eat no worry you know why bother so my thoughts always say eat all right so I having this problem of eating a lot a lot of time and then after that feeling guilty so these thoughts you can see okay now he, he, she is having thoughts and feeling guilty what are your emotions I feel very sad because each time I vomit out not only that I feel that I'm wasting the food but also I'm affecting my health uh, but I can't help it because I want to be slim so I whatever it is I will do you know so that is a situation that's why uh, the doctor told me that uh, this is bulimia you have to have some sort of counseling or coaching to help you out okay so this is Amy saying all right what are your feelings each time I feel bad I feel that my body is fat all right I feel that every ounce of the fat on my body is like a curse to me so this is what Amy is saying about his her feelings all right so what are the actions that you are doing as usual I always go through the cycle of eating and then vomiting eating and vomiting and the result is now I have this challenge of this problem now I'm just summarizing uh, this whole dialogue with Amy because it could be you know two hours three hours of just getting to know her and trying to bring her out over to give some idea of what it needs to be done eh? so from here you can see that the situation thoughts emotion feelings action and result are negative which is causing her bulimia so now you have to find a solution all right of coaching her and giving her some way out all right and that way out could be in terms of uh, behavior modification in terms of cognitive behavior therapy which i have given you we have the picbt you go through we have more than 50 videos all right on our youtube P positive islamic cognitive behavior therapy when you can use the methodology but this tool stefan is a tool to to dig out or to find out the challenges as the person faces this challenge so this is a tool i remember stefar s-t-e-f-a-r and this is where you can uh, journal down later after meeting amy and then help her out through positive systemic psychology cognitive behavior therapy which we're going to go into this situ uh, in these videos later on yeah so already we have done 50 but i will do specifically more later on under uh, counseling later on in our series of uh, motivation coaching mentoring and counseling the four levels of certified coach which i'm going to give it to you inshallah over the series of video over the time in future inshallah so remember we are here to be the sincere servant of allah to be his caliph on this earth always striving to make ourselves good helping others to be good and making the world good inshallah